everyone welcome to h cooper crafty bug i am hyla and welcome to my channel hope you'll consider subscribing tap that bell for notifications and like share and comment but please be kind with those comments so i'm making a victory braid first and this is part of the 2023 senior mum series so i'm making a victory braid and this is another way to start a victory braid i know i've done another video on starting it this way um, but i wanted to try it with this so i'm adding some diamond dust and i am doubling the ribbons and i put a staple in it to hold everything in place because i only wanted the diamond dust on one one side i didn't want to double the diamond dust but it is going to co co um, cost me some issues that staple is going to get in my way and you'll see that i had to open a new roll of white so i went ahead and showed that and i unravel that all the way around and then cut that off because it's usually like really dirty on the outside so i just go ahead and and unravel it once and cut that off then I'm going to measure out and I need my braid to be about 30 inches long so I'm measuring out 54 inches no two braids come out exactly the same length for me so um, it's safe bet to go 12 to 6 to 12 inches extra on any braid um, you may end up with some extra ribbons use those for loops or you know whatever but it, it's up to you um i do have measurements for all these links and i usually put them in the description but i'm going to go ahead and read them out for you for a 16 inch braid you want 24 inches of ribbon 24 inch braid you want 48 inches of ribbons 30 inch braid you want 54 inches of ribbons a 36 inch braid you want one yard plus 24 inches and an 18 inch braid you want about 30 inches now these like i said they're not exact they don't always come out exactly the same so please keep that in mind like i said i am doubling these ribbons i measured out 54 inches and then i fold it in half in the center both of those ribbons i've got them back to back and i've got the shiny side facing out on either side so the dull side is back to back to each other and then I fold them in half in the very center of the ribbon after I cut that last one off so I measure out 54 inches fold it measure out another 54 inches and then do another one so I've got double the ribbons there so you see that crease where I fold it in the middle and then you want to make an arrow or a point there at the top just like you would a spirit chain and you also do this with some uh, whip braids like one version of folding the whip braid so this should be a pretty common thing for you to know how to do and when i'm trying to do this i believe that staple if i remember correctly that staple got in the way So it's kind of fighting that because you want to interlock them together and weave them so one you've got two sets of ribbons there right two points so you've got one that you want to fold you've got to interlock the ribbons like a basket weave and i've got to take that so i've got to take that staple out but then i've got to <laughs> keep those ribbons together i think i just moved the staple up like in the corner so it would be easier if you just did uh, double the uh, diamond dust and I just clipped that one to hold it in place so while I'm dealing with this one I don't um, lose the spot on that other one so you want them to be perfectly in order so if you did a double the diamond dust or just doubled whatever acetates or whatever you're doing, you would not have to fight with this. But if you're just wanting to use one piece of diamond dust, this is how you would have to do it. So I stapled each side. So now those staples are out of my way and I can wrap those on top of each other. And there is a certain way that it has to be done because the very right ribbon needs to be on top which i did not accomplish there because you start with the very right ribbon so that one needs to be on top 
Okay, so now to redo them so the right ribbon will be on top. You see how that goes? One ribbon goes underneath, one goes over and then underneath. So every ribbon is gonna be over and underneath another ribbon. And I just showed you that white one is on top. And I'm gonna lay this down and I am gonna freeze frame it so you can see which one is on top. Very right one. Now I'm gonna fold that under those two ribbons on top of the very left ribbon and then back under the very left ribbon. And before I start creasing any ribbons, I make sure that everything is where it needs to be, that the creases are gonna be good, that the angles are good, and make any adjustments that I need to make right here before I start creasing. But if they're where they need to be, then I'll go ahead and crease. And they were fine, so I'm creasing them. I do have other, victory braid tutorials if this isn't a great angle plus using the white and silver it's not great either and i'm stapling those together so they won't come apart all right i just laid a heavy ruler on top there so that will weigh it down and keep it in place now we start with the left ribbon and we go over under the next two ribbons and then over and um, under the very right ribbon so the opposite of what the first uh, braiding was. The first one was you started with the right side, you go under two, then you go over and under the very left one. And then you start with the left one and you go under the next two ribbons and over and under the last ribbon on the right. Now you see the right ribbon is on top, so you know that's going to be your next one. So you go under, under those two, and then, hope you can see that, and then under, or over and under, the very left one, I'm sorry. I'm trying to explain it. And make sure you push those up and get them all connected before you crease them. You want all those little triangles to be connected as much as possible. You don't wanna see the ribbon that's underneath it. That's how you know your braid looks good. You can't see that ribbon underneath all those folds. And you just keep going. So you're gonna be on the left side this time. You're going under those two. And then over and under the one on the right. And then your right side will be your next side. Now, um, if you do double the diamond dust, of course you're gonna have more silver on there. What I ended up doing was weaving, or not really weaving, but I added some a secondary silver ribbon that was more of a darker silver which gave it a, a great contrast and I believe I did that in a live stream I know I showed it because I've shown 99.9% .9 of this mum and um, yeah I'm almost positive it was in a live stream so I'll have to make sure that's in the playlist if you don't know I have a playlist with all these videos and lives where I worked on this silver mum this uh, senior senior silver and white mum and uh, that way you can just go to the playlist and you can watch all of it. But it, I mean, as pretty as the braid is now, when I add the pewter, because I used a lot of pewter acetate in some of the braids, so adding that darker silver just gave it this really awesome con contrast. Right on this next set of folds, I am I slowed down the video a little bit, so you may notice that it's a little bit slower. Just in case you're having any issues with uh, the braid technique, you can also go into the settings on the screen on any YouTube video, the little settings uh, round button, and you can adjust the playback speed. You can speed it up, you can slow it down. So if you're trying to learn a new braid, you can slow it way down and then you can do the folds uh, with the person on the video. So I hope, that, I hope that helps when I slow it down just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna keep going until I get to the end of the braid.
All right, I'm at the end. This is as far as I can go. I'm sorry, Lucy's tilting her head at me and looking at me like I'm a weirdo because I'm talking to the computer. Um, but just give it a couple of staples to hold everything in place and then trim off your ribbons however you want to trim them. I do them differently all the time. So you may notice that if you've watched dif uh, different uh, Victory Braid tutorials. Now you can make victory braids with more than four ribbons. You can do it with six ribbons, eight ribbons. I imagine you can keep on going by twos. And I have uh, a tutorial for six ribbon. And then for the VIP members, I have one with eight. And now this is a screen recording from the live stream I was talking about earlier. So this is where I added the other glitter ribbon to it. And I will put a link for this live stream but like I said it's also in the playlist and I'll also put a link probably at the end of the video and then also uh, maybe one of the cards coming across to the playlist so it's all going to be in there. I can't guarantee that it's all in order because I may not have uh, released them all in order it just depends on you know what I did a live on and then what when I got things edited and stuff like for example this live stream has already shown and I already had this made I already had this victory braid made but then I had to go back and uh, you know edit the video of making the, the victory braid so it the place the playlist won't necessarily be in order of what was made it'll be like probably in order of when it was released <clears throat> so if that confuses you a little bit that's why but if you want to see how I did all of this, you can go over to that live stream. And now I'm doing a loopy chain and all these loops I made with the extra ribbon that I had on the zigzag braid. So all those extra ribbons that were hanging off, it made all of these loops. All of them are doubled. The white ribbon is doubled and then they're layered with the um, diamond dust, the striped diamond dust. So I'm just going to start making a, a loopy chain, but I am going to play around um, with how I want to attach the loops because I wasn't sure. I just decided to go ahead and make some loops and, and why not make a loop chain? So for your loops, you want to make six inches, but I'm, I'm going to fold it in half because I'm doubling it. It does make your loops stronger and it does make them hold their shape better and hold up better. For, from wear and tear or bumping into things and stuff like that and it does make them look a little bit better too so but again when you're thinking about things like that you need to think about your budget their budget stuff like that <clears throat> so if you can double them I recommend it if you can't then don't don't worry about it do what you can Gonna layer it with the diamond dust and I looked up my previous order and it was the number two three eighths inch which I just put up on the screen and I had ordered that from L and M focus so you can see it's got like the striped pattern I really like it this is the first year I've used the striped and I really really do like it I only have it in that size too <coughs> I'll definitely would like to order it in the future in different sizes. Now I do have to um, make a few more loops but I did have quite a few so that was good. I'm trying to show the size because I didn't know what the size was uh, when I was doing this. So I'm just trying to show you with the ruler what the size is. <clears throat> There we go. <laughs> Again, it's the three eighths, number two. Now this ribbon I get from Amazon. I really like it. I have it in silver and gold. I just ordered some more this year. So it's real flexible, so it's not a stiff ribbon. Um, I use it for the backing of, of loop chains. I use it to make bows out of it. I use it for loops, um, of course, with an acetate or a luster with it. It's really, really pretty. I really like it. All right, so now I'm just going to lay these out in different patterns 
and see which way I like it. Like I'm doing it threes right there. It's kind of hard to get them to sit exactly where you want them to. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try a few different things before I decide which way I want to attach them. I decided to just do like a poofy, a whole bunch of these random loops um, towards the bottom of the chain. I'm not going to do a full chain um, because I want to have a place to do maybe custom cutouts or something like that. So they're just going to be towards the bottom. And like I said, I'm trying to attach these randomly. I have at least one video. I'm pretty sure I have more than one of doing this loopy chain. I will admit I do have some trouble with this chain because I want it to make sense. I want it to be in some sort of order how you attach the loops and it's not. You're supposed to just randomly attach them <laughs> and I always have trouble with that and then I always want to start putting them in some sort of order so it does kind of stress me out. <laughs> it's funny because it does and then I always go through after uh, you know, I make it or make part of it. I always go through and, and make and put more in places where I already attached because I'll feel like there's holes that I need to fill in. So you're going to see me do that too. But I thought you guys would enjoy knowing that this one gives me a hard time. So it's a, it's a hashtag PETA braid for me.
right, this is the last loop that I'm going to attach to it. I finally felt like it was full enough. I, like I said, I just kept feeling like it needed more and more, so I just keep filling it in as, as it needs. But uh, you could go all the way up with this and have this really full braid if you wanted or chain. And But that's not what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to make a bow for it. I'm so sorry about moving all that. So I'm taking this ribbon and the reason why I showed that is so you could see how long the ribbon was. That's why I showed moving of the camera. But this is a very simple cheer bow. Uh, bow. <laughs> very simple to make. Just find the center and you want to fold the ribbon like I did and you want to pinch the center and then I use a Chanel stem. I'm going to use a pretty sh a silver metallic Chanel stem so it matches the bow and uh, and I'll give it a twist and I will attach it to the top of the braid or chain. This is a chain. I feel like a braid. The ribbons actually need to be folded together and braided and then it's something like this where you're stapling things on or gluing things on. To me that's a chain. So get some good scissors when you're working with wire. And then I'm going to cut a V shape at the end of both of those tails to make them pretty. I just love that ribbon. It's just so blingy and so pretty. It sparkles really well. It doesn't seem like it loses a lot of glitter either. And then I'm just going to staple it on. You could glue it on however you want. I like to staple the Chanel stem down to the ribbon, but if that doesn't work for you, you can glue, you can glue in staples. Sometimes I do both. Just trying to get it centered. Sometimes so when I staple, because I staple both sides of the bow, both of those Chanel stem ends, so sometimes it gets off center, which happens to me on this one here. So I'm just stapling that Chanel stem down to the ribbon and then I kind of fold up that end. And I think I completely missed the Chanel stem. That's why I stapled it again. And then I go to the opposite side and then I staple that side down too. And I fold up the end bend it over because I don't want the sharp edge of that Chanel stem sticking out where it might actually, you know, accidentally a brush up against somebody. So I kind of fold it in and hide it and tuck it in under the bow, behind the bow, so it, it won't jab anybody. But when I stapled it down, I realized it got off centered. So I had to undo it and I just got my staple remover and undid it. So I wouldn't rip anything. That's the worst thing when you try to remove a staple and you end up ripping something and then having to start over or attach to something different. So that's why I'm being careful and getting my staple remover because I don't want to have to reattach to anything. I don't want to rip up this ribbon. You know, it's an expensive ribbon. And I just spent all that time making that braid or chain. can be a little difficult to get it undone from the staples, but that's a good thing because I know it's on there secure. <laughs> but I'm showing this because, you know, I do stuff that I have to undo all the time. So don't get frustrated. It's going to happen. I didn't want my bow on there all crooked, so all off center. One of the Chanel stems was much longer than the other one. Now 
you might have to kind of fix your bow after all that straighten it up reshape it yeah I think that's pretty and then I'll put something really pretty in the center of that bow too some kind of bling bigger piece of bling that really stands out yeah right there but I think that's a pretty chain and then I love you know all that glitter showing is perfect or I can put some custom cutouts thanks for watching everyone I hope you subscribe don't forget to share like comment please be kind with those comments be kind to yourself be kind to others happy mum making everyone